All right, so in today's video, we are going to be talking about something called parallax scrolling. And we will, what this is, is watch this level as it plays. You can see how there's multiple levels in the background. So I've got the ones that seem to be up close and they're moving fast as I move. And you've got the ones in the back middle that are moving a little slower, although it's kind of hard to see. There's also the clouds in the furthest background and those are moving even slower. So this technique, called parallax scrolling where you have multiple layers that move at different speeds kind of helps give the illusion of depth to the world and it makes the background seem much more alive and so I'm going to show you how we can do that in Godot so to start off I'm going to take us to open up level 5 in the scene that you've imported and level 5 is basically just like level 4 but without the parallax backgrounds already added for you so the first step is go ahead and select Node 2D and click the plus and you're going to type Parallax and that's P-A-R-A-L-L-A -L -L -A. and then you should be far enough. So you see this Parallax background. So we're, we're trying to add a Parallax background so let's go ahead and add that node. And now a Parallax background alone doesn't really do much. But the next thing you do is you add a Parallax layer to that. So we're going to select the Parallax background node and we're going to click the plus. And the next one you add is this one called Parallax Layer. Go ahead and add that. And we will first add the clouds. So for each parallax layer, you have to add a sprite. But let's go ahead and name this one clouds. And we're going to add a sprite to that layer now. And you guys may have noticed um, over here on the left here, there's your recent nodes. You can save yourself a lot of typing if you're adding the same node over and over again because um, it'll be right there and you don't have to search for it. It just knows that that's one of your recent ones. So you can add it again quickly. So we'll add a sprite here. And we will now select that sprite. And over here, I'm going to go to your assets folder, go down to ping, and then background. I'm going to select there. Notice I don't see anything because I searched for levels. So I'm going to clear that out. And the very first one that I need to add is, I'm calling it, it's called BG Layer 2 here. Uh, BG Layer 1 is a blue sky background, but what I did is I changed the default render clearing color to kind of a sky blue here. And I'll show you how to change that too, so that I didn't have to have that layer. So we're going to drag this BG Layer 2 over here into the texture box. So once I've done that, you now see I've got some clouds. All right, now there's a couple more important things to do here. With the sprite still selected, uncheck the centered box right here. And notice it looks like it went away. It didn't actually go away, it just moved down because now it's not centered. All right, now the next thing you need to do is figure out how wide this thing is because we want it to repeat onto infinity on the x-axis, remember that's the left and right, so we need to know how wide this thing is so that we know how often to repeat the texture. So go ahead and right where it says texture here on the far right, you should see a little arrow. So go ahead and click that. And then you can see the size here says 2048 by 2048. So that means 2048 is how wide this particular image is here. And that means that that is the repeat or mirror width that we need to work with. So go ahead and select the parallax layer that we called clouds here and you can see mirroring is set to 0, 0. So actually what we want to do, set that to 2048. So we'll go ahead and do that. And now it's going to show us only two, two repeats here, but I'm going to go ahead now and move those clouds up so that they are above where our level is. And so that uh, to do that, we will put an offset on the canvas layer here. So we're going to offset it to, I'm going to guess, around negative 1500. All right, so that looks like that'll work. Um, we can lower that or make it fit on your screen if you need to. So let's go ahead and press play on this and see what happens. All right, so I've got some clouds in the background and they're moving. And let's see if they run out before I reach the end of this little platform here. Nope. So they repeat onto infinity just like we had hoped. Okay, so we've done one. Um, we can go ahead and duplicate that one. So go ahead and select clouds, and you can either hit Control D, or you can right click on it and go down to duplicate. And now let's call this next one hills. 
Now the only thing we really need to change is select the sprite and grab BG layer 3 and drag that into there and now you've got hills. Now you may notice when you look at this one the colors are different. So these distant hills you can make it any color you want by while well, you have the sprite selected down here in the inspector panel you see modulate. So go ahead and click on that and you can pick any color you want. So I like for, for the sake of this one, because I'm trying to make it look like distant hills, kind of like fade it out a little bit and make it green. All right, now I'm going to copy that one again. And now it's going to be trees. All right, so now I've got trees. I'm going to select the sprite that's in trees. I'm going to drag this new texture for trees over. All right, so I've got these trees. Now I'm going to modulate these and make these a uh, darker color. Now, you may say, well, I want these trees to be up higher, okay? So if you need that to happen, go ahead and select this uh, parallax layer named trees here, and you can give it an offset. So don't, you don't do the offset for motion. I'm going to tell you about those in just a second, but actually do it in the node 2D here and give it a uh, negative, let's say 200, not 2003, negative 200 here on the y-axis. Now that you see I've moved those up while keeping the other ones uh, kind of the same as they are. So that's how you can move the layers. Now sometimes you may end up with a problem like this. And you get your layers and they look out of order. And that's not how you want them. So to fix that you can drag them around just like this. And now uh, that's how you can arrange the layers and how they're drawn. Like for instance if my clouds are below my clouds will show up in front. So if I move my clouds to the back, or to the top of the list here, then they move into the back. The reason why that works is the rendering order starts at the top, and it renders those, and then it renders down the list. So the thing at the very bottom of the list is always going to be on top of everything else. So the most recent thing added to the tree is the last thing drawn, and therefore it's on top of everything else. Alright, so the next thing we need to know is, you may have remembered that the close-up layer moves quick and the middle layer moves a little slower, and the farthest layer moves even slower. And that gives the illusion of depth. Without that distance, uh, without that difference in the scroll speed, it all looks to be the same layer, and that illusion is broken. So to get that to work, select the trees layer, and you see this motion scale, and it's 1-1. One, one. What that means is that as my character moves across the landscape, the landscape moves in the opposite direction at the same speed. Okay. So if I wanted to, I can select now the hills, and I want the scale to be set to 0.5, so half, on the x-axis. So now the hills will scroll by at half the speed of the trees. And then the clouds, the clouds I want to scroll by even slower. I'm going to put them at a quarter of the speed. Okay, so now all of those layers are going to scroll by at different, different percentages of the speed of my character. So let's go ahead and see how this looks. So I've got this, my guy's moving, all the layers are moving at slightly different speeds. So it looks like it's working well. Alright, so that is how you do parallax layers. And I will now show, I'll, let me go over the things that are really important to notice, that are easy to miss. So the first thing that's easy to miss and kind of throw, even threw me off when I was first exploring with these was uh, the centered button here. If your sprite that you add to your back or your parallax layer is still centered, it will not work. And that um, is sometimes hard to figure out. So I missed that. And the next thing you do is the mirroring. You need to uh, make sure that your mirroring width is appropriate. So that's another uh, gotcha that can get you there. And then to move the layer up and down, make sure that you use the canvas layer offset to move the entire background up and down. Or for each individual layer, make sure you use the transform pause. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and end this video.